Monday, I almost said December, Monday, January 22nd, okay, and I did what I said, and I went shopping in my closet yesterday, and I did find a new blouse, this is from Kato's, and it is a size 28, and there is no way in the world I would have been able to wear that at a 28, I am a size 22 right now, so yeah, there is no way, um, but it has the ruching on the side so it's supposed to fit you a little snug and this is supposed to gather and, and sort of camouflage the belly and all that stuff which nothing does you can't camouflage belly <laughs> but anyway so yeah I got that from Kato's quite a few years ago and then I'm wearing my leggings that I got at Family or no Dollar General the other day and a shrug that or vest that I got at Family Dollar a couple years ago so very comfy outfit and I just I love this shirt and I never did get to wear it because it set a size 28 but I'm one of those girls that I won't try things on when I'm at the store I buy them if they don't fit then I just take them back but with this shirt I liked it so much I was like oh, I'm just gonna put it in the back of my closet and eventually I will get into it and guess what I did <laughs> Alrighty, well, today is Mini Monday, and I wanted to talk to you guys about um, the things that we go through while we're losing large amounts of weight. What to expect, the negative part of losing like, large amounts of weight. So let me get a cup of coffee, and we're going to sit down and chit-chat about that. Talk to you in a sec. Good morning. It's Mini Monday, and welcome to the Sitting Ramble. I wanted to talk to you guys today about some of the negative things that I've experienced while losing a large amount of weight. Um, sometimes there's things that you're not expecting to happen. So I thought I would talk to you guys about my experiences and some things that's happened to me over the last seven months that I'm pretty sure we can all expect to happen. So if you haven't experienced it yet, then you will know to look forward to it <laughs> okay oh by the way I'm trying that English toffee skinny syrup in my latte this morning mm -hmm. very good very good just to let y'all know mm -hmm. but okay so let's get into it um, the first thing that I noticed and it was within the first month was the keto breath the horrid breath Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's bad and I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's bad and the taste in your mouth is horrible. And I was brushing my teeth every single time I walked into the bathroom. And that doesn't help because it's not an oral hygiene issue. It is as the ketones is being broken down, as the fat's being broken down and making the ketones and the body's using those, the byproduct is this horrible gas that comes <laughs> out of the bowels of, mm -hmm, yeah, and leaches out through your skin, your body odor changes, um, all discharge changes, your breath changes. So it's horrible, but it does pass. At least I hope it passes. Maybe I just got used to it. And nobody's told me, but no, I think it passes. <laughs> I haven't noticed it in a while. <laughs> But yeah, so you can look forward to if you're just starting bad breath and other areas. <laughs> and then um, the second thing that I noticed, and that was within, I'm going to say by month two, very emotional. All my emotions were all over the place. I could go from happy to sad within five minutes. Just, oh my goodness, the worst PMS in history. And I used to be very well balanced emotionally, almost to the point of cold and deadpan. Um, I was able to control my emotions easily and be in very high stressed situations. And people would think I was taking a Sunday drive. You know, I could handle intense, intense situations. 
which I still can't handle those things. But the emotion that I display afterwards, um, yeah, is sometimes a little bit unacceptable. Yeah, I am very, very emotional. Highs and lows. And that is evening out. I'm in month, middle of month seven. I'm seven and a half months in. And that's starting to even out for me. But, oh my goodness, at the beginning, it was horrible. And I will tell you, I'm going to say from my experience and from what I'm understanding about the breakdown of the fat, that this is something you're going to be able to expect until you get all your weight off. Because what's happening is we're tapping into those old fat cells that's storing junk and garbage and hormones. And it kicks up our hormones and just makes us crazy, crazy people. <laughs> so I think you can expect that. You can ex ex think, you can expect to tap into that craziness at any point in time during your journey. So just because it's better for me right now emotionally, that doesn't mean in a week I won't have a crazy breakdown and be crying and sobbing and laughing and giggling and just make my husband very scared to be around me. <laughs> and then the third thing that I noticed was itchy skin. Oh my goodness, I itched so bad. And I still do every now and then. I have bouts of itchiness, um, especially this past week. I've been very itchy. But itchy skin and dry, flaky skin and rashes that are just like prickly and itchy. And then when you scratch them, they actually hurt. Um, but what that is, is the same thing. Your body's dipping into those old fat cells that have stored our the garbage and the junk and the toxins and then those are being leached out of your skin when you sweat and it's irritating your skin so i'm going to assume that we can expect flare-ups of skin issues until we get all the weight off because yeah our skin's not liking the nasty that it's happened to pull out of there as we're detoxifying um so we put our bodies through hell and it's going to pay us back yeah, we just have to bear with it. It will pass. Okay. Then the fourth thing is one of the things that most people do hear about and they're a little bit of scare, scared to experience. And I started going through it at month four and that's hair loss, extreme thinning. Yes, your hair. And it's not just with keto. It's with any weight loss journey. Your hair is going to Thin. It's going to fall out. It's a shock to the body. And as the body's trying to regulate itself, it's not going to send a lot of energy to the hair, to the hair follicles. So your hair is going to thin starting in between month four and six. It's going to thin, but then it comes back. And what you're left with, in my experience, is beautiful hair. I have got the most healthy hair right now that I've ever had during my adult life. My hair has always been dry and frizzy, and it may not have been falling out at the roots, but it was extremely brittle, and it would break off. The amount of breakage that I had in the sink in the mornings was unbelievable, even before I started dieting. So the fallout for me was really no big deal. But now I feel stubble. It's starting to come back in. And uh, the hair that is left on my head is soft and beautiful. I've had some of the most gorgeous hair days that I've ever experienced here in the last couple months. So I'm very happy when it comes to my hair. So if you're going through that now, it will pass. And if you haven't gotten there yet, please don't freak out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen most likely, but it'll pass. Just bear with it. Just bear with it. And then if it gets too thin on top, because mine did, it got really thin. You could see my scalp all the way across the top of my head. Get yourself some pretty, really wide of those elastic headbands and then tease up the hair behind it. There's tricks that we can do to cover that up. Hair bands and barrettes and cover that stuff up if it bothers you too much. Okay, and then this was an odd one. My feet shrunk. <laughs> So you can expect to drop a shoe size. Um, I was always, when I was thinner, I was always a size five, a size three in children. And then when 
I gained the weight over the last few years, my shoe size went up to a six, which I was very happy with because you know how hard it is to find a size five shoe? It's literally impossible. And online shopping for shoes, they started a six. Go to the shoe store, they started a six. It's very difficult to find a size five shoe. So I normally had to go to the kids department and get a size three to four, depending on what they were. So here lately, my feet have shrunk up so much that I don't even know that a size five would fit me if I could find one because all my old shoes were worn out. I threw them away. So all my shoes I have now are sixes. And they flop around on my feet like I'm wearing my mom's shoes and I'm trying to play dress up. So I really need to invest in new shoes as soon as possible because, yeah, they look, you can tell when I walk, you can hear the way they hit the ground that they're hitting the ground before my foot. They're flopping. You can hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, you can expect your shoe size to change. Uh, uh, up to one shoe size, you know, half a shoe size. So expects to be shopping for shoes, ladies. I know you're not disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> and then another thing that happened to me, and I'm sure will happen to a lot of us, is I didn't recognize myself. So we look in the mirror every day. And I know a lot of people complain, oh my gosh, I'm four months in and I don't look any different and I don't notice a difference. And people say something to me, but I think they're just trying to be nice. I don't notice a difference. It's because our brains know we're going to look in that mirror and it's expecting to see you in a certain way. And that's the way we see ourselves, regardless of what we actually look like. So it's very difficult for us to see ourselves as we're looking in the mirror the way we truly are and the way we're seen by other people. So I was shopping the other day and this lady was in front of me and I went to go around her and she stepped that way. And I went to go the other direction and she stepped that way. And I started to tell her, Oh my goodness, do you want to dance? And when I looked up into her face, I was staring at myself. I was talking to myself. I was in front of a mirror. <laughs> you want to talk about how embarrassing it is? I'm sitting there, oh, pardon me, excuse me. And then here I'm talking to myself. I'm like, oh, that's you, girl. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's very strange feeling not to recognize yourself. And you're going to get that when you're looking in a mirror that you didn't expect to be there or your reflection in a glass window that you didn't expect to see, you're gonna see somebody different in that moment. That's when you're gonna see the loss. That's when you're gonna see the change. So instead of just walk away and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that. Take the time, take a moment, look at yourself, appreciate the work that you've put in. Take a moment and feel the pride. It is going to feel weird for you not to recognize yourself because it did to me. I started to walk away just like, wow, that, that's so weird. And it was a little off-putting. But then I went back to the mirror and I took a moment and I looked at all those changes that has been made over the last seven months. And I allowed myself to be awed by the work that I put in. You need that. So, yes, it's a little off-putting at first, but take it in and enjoy that moment. Okay. Seven. Now this is going to be a little TMI, but I feel like it needs to be addressed. You're going to have a wonky cycle. Okay. Not just one, a lot. Your cycle is going to get off kilter. We are, again, ripping into those old fat cells. We are disturbing some hormones. And it's going to affect our cycle. So if you haven't gotten there yet, you can expect that. Now, not everybody goes through it, but I have. I have had a month where I didn't have one at all. Or you could be like me right now. I'm trying to have three this month. I already had one at the end of December. I had one at the beginning of January. And now I'm um, trying again. <laughs> So, yeah, expect your cycle to be all over the place. Again, as we're messing with hormones, it's going to, yeah, everything. But your body will regulate. It will eventually regulate itself. So be prepared for it. Expect it. And then just ride along with it. <laughs> ride it out, ladies. Ride it out. <laughs> okay. 
then this is something that sort of, I was, should have known that it was going to happen, but at the same time when it happened, it sort of surprised me. And this just happened this weekend. Okay. I haven't had any pain since I started this way of eating. Within two months, my arthritis and all my back issues and all my knee issues and all my ankle issues cleared up. It was amazing that I was in so much pain. And then within two to two and a half weeks to go to no pain. Um, there was times in the mornings when if I had to pee so bad, I had to literally crawl out of bed and crawl into the bathroom because I could not stand up on my own feet or my own ankles because they hurt too bad and I needed to have time in the morning to actually stretch them out before I could stand on them. And if I had to pee too bad, I had to crawl. I had to crawl to the bathroom. Within two and a half weeks, no pain. I could have run if I wanted to. If I'd have had the stamina, the lung capacity to run, I would have had no pain if I wanted to run. And it's just amazing to me. And I haven't experienced pain since. Well, then on Saturday, I had went to Newport Aquarium and walked around. And by mid-afternoon, my lower back started to hurt. And I thought, well, you know, you're doing a lot of walking. Then I thought about it. No, you're not. You walk more than this in a day at work. No, you're not. You're meandering about. So you, I wasn't carrying anything. I didn't have a purse on my arm. You know, nothing. So through the night, Saturday night into Sunday morning, I could barely sleep. The pain was so bad. Sunday I got up and it was just killing me. And it hit me. Okay, since the first of the month, you have went through this major whoosh. On the first, I weighed 247. When I got on the scale, I don't even remember what day it was now, guys. Friday? I'm pretty sure it was Friday. Yes, it was. It was Friday. I got on the scale because I can notice such a dramatic difference in myself. I was 229. So that is an 18 pound difference. That's a lot of weight. That is a lot of weight to experience in a whoosh. And my back is feeling it because think about it, all that weight's pulling on your front. So all that, your lower belly, and I can tell that's where I've lost it from, is my girls and my lower belly. So all of that was pulling on my back. Then now I've lost it. I'm standing up straighter. It's, it's affecting the alignment of the spine and the muscles that's, that's supporting your spine. So you can expect if you're having a dramatic weight loss to experience some back pain, some shoulder pain, some neck pain, even your hips and your knees from, even though it's a lighter load, can experience pain from handling a lighter load. So yeah, even though this is the first I've encountered during my journey, I can feel like I can safely say that that's something we all could eventually encounter is some back pain or shoulder pain, some kind of pain from the shift in weight. So I took some ibuprofen and I'm feeling better, but I just wanted to bring it up as a negative side effect. Um, and one of the other things that I hear people talking about and it surprises me is excess, excess skin, loose skin. So many people are worried about loose skin and yes, I have it already. I have loose skin and it does bother me a little bit, okay? But do I wanna be 322 pounds again and have nice, firm, tight, luscious, oily, not oily, glowy, because <laughs> I did, I thought I had pretty skin when I was overweight. It glowed, and because it's, yeah, <laughs> we all know, we all know how overweight women have perfect skin. It just, the majority of overweight women look younger than what they are, and they have perfect skin. Well, I would much rather have loose skin and maybe look a little bit more haggard looking and be in a healthy weight zone, have my diabetes under control, have my high blood pressure under control, 
no more neuropathy in my feet. That pain is gone, the stinging's gone, the numbness is gone, the tingling is gone. No more edema, the skin being sweat, stretched so tight, it's shiny, and if you bump it on anything, actually having your skin split open. And I hope there's a lot of you out there that's watching this that have never experienced that. And the ones of you who are watching it and have, been there, girl. Yeah, and I don't want to ever go back there. So give me the loose skin. Bring it on. I will gladly accept it. It might be a negative in a way, but I'd gladly accept it over any other option. Okay? And then the last one. The last one's going to be a little painful for us to deal with. And that is we are enjoying our journey. We want to talk about it every day. And our friends and family at first are very supportive. They encourage us and they listen to our stories and they laugh with our experiences. But they expect you to piddle out relatively quickly. And when you don't and you keep going on and you keep telling the stories, they get tired of hearing it. They get tired of hearing it. And then we feel unsupported. But that's really not what's going on. Okay, most of the time, they're just pacifying us in the beginning. And then when they see us succeeding, first it does get old listening to the same thing every day. It does get old. But also, it brings up insecurities for people. Then they start thinking about their own health issues and their own weight issues. And it makes them feel vulnerable and it makes them feel triggered. So you got to think of it as not taking it personal for yourself, but knowing that it's about them and their issues and they're just not able to support you right then. But you know what? We've got each other. We're building a community here to support each other. And I have my own Facebook group called We're Losing It because we are girls. We're losing it. Or gentlemen. Gentlemen too. We're losing it. So I'm going to link that down below in the description box. And you guys log on to there and support each other. Get on there and talk about when you're feeling stressed. Talk about the things that people don't want to listen to anymore. And you can tell when their eyes wait is over and they're tuning you out. So come to that page for community, for support, to vent. You're not going to be judged there because we're all going through the same stuff. So we're losing it. Let's lose it together. Okay? Alrighty. And then I want to talk to you guys too about the giveaway. So today is the last day. So you're going to, the final word's going to be in this video. So the first person to put in the comments below the completed sentence will win the gift bag. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, I have had a fantastic day. And I've got to get going. I've got, I shouldn't say a fantastic day, a fantastic morning. Um, I've been up forever, it feels like. But I've got to get to work. So I'm going to let you guys go. And you guys have a great day. And I will talk to you tomorrow on Tipsy Tuesday. Blessings. Three, two, one.